Hi everyone, Realthony Dealtano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for a review of the new Squid album, Bright Green Field. This is the debut full-length LP from UK-based art and post-punk outfit Squid, a record I have been anticipating since their Town Center EP, since some of the 2020 singles that they dropped with, uh, that were pretty impressive, and I've just been dying to hear how high the group's ambitions would soar when they eventually dropped their first full length. Now, after having listened to Bright Green Field, I think the answer to that question is uh, pretty high. This record also arrives in the midst of what seems like a wave of new bands kind of killing it in this style, whether that be Shame, Black Country New Road, there's also that highly anticipated Black Midi record coming out later this year. So I think the last thing any new band wants to do here is blend in with all of this. But thankfully, Squid's efforts on this LP stand out in a number of ways. I mean, they are a rock band signed to the legendary electronic music label Warp Records. Not the first, by the way, but you know if they're signing on an artist of that style on that label, you're gonna hear something that is a little off the beaten path. Now, throughout Bright Green Field, Squid delivers varied instrumentals, winding song structures, tight playing, and intense linear builds that sometimes just border on kraut rock. This thing really is a multi-genre experience. From the droning and eventually chaotic synth passages that break partway into Boy Racers, to the somewhat hypnotic and minimal repetitions of synths and horns at the start of Documentary Filmmaker. Maybe the most derivative aspect of the band's sound are the vocals, but I can't deny that they're well done and give off a serious intensity on highlights such as narrator and paddling. Plus, they sound like a cross between David Byrne, Fred Schneider of B-52's fame, and then Modest Mouse's Isaac Brock. They're yelpy, they're frantic, and exaggerated as humanly possible. And they fit perfectly over these instrumentals that feel like a combination of the groovy oddity of Para Ubu or Early Gang of Four with the cool, meditative art rock passages of Radioheads in Rainbows. And this combination of ideas works much of the time, whether, again, you're talking about Narrator, which features lots of jerky, uh, very hard and angular grooves. Then suddenly we see these shifts into these smooth, twinkling, chilly rock passages that, again, have that mesmerizing in Rainbows quality. Just for a taste the first time around, but then after we pass through the second verse, that's when the band really starts laying on this cycling alt-rock refrain that seems pretty like Cobain-esque. I play mine, I play mine. Eventually building all of this up into a wall of distortion and strings and screams. It's really one of the most intense sonic peaks of the entire record. These very chill driving angular guitar passages also pop into the Songboy Racers too and become a really awesome foundation for the band to build on. That is before they suddenly break into that ambient synth passage I talked about earlier. The rigid and very alien feeling paddling also contributes to what is a pretty perfect first leg for the record, as does the very real GSK. Once more, in my view, this LP has a watertight first half, but then as we transition into the rest of Bright Green Field, its flaws as a debut start to surface. Documentary filmmaker, though I do like some aspects of this track instrumentally, may be the most underwhelming cut here. The spoken word passages at really any point of the song aren't nearly as engaging or as, I guess, out there as they seem to think they are. Then after this, with the song already feeling like it's severely lacking, it starts to just lull itself into an inconclusive finish. The track 2010 again brings those In Rainbows vibes back to the point where I can hear Tom York howling over these guitars in my head. And like usual up until this point, Squid puts their own spin on it with really weird panned vocal passages and just a crushing riff that flies in around the 90 second mark. But the linear build in the second half feels less like an ascent and more just like an unfulfilling cacophony, the band kind of slowly just filling in cracks and gaps to make the finish sound different than the intro. Peel Street kicks off with one of the best and most oddly shaped grooves on the entire record. The stuttering synthesizers and frantic percussion is absolutely insane. When this track gets going, it's just really chugging along like an unstoppable steam engine. And I appreciate the band didn't want the track to just be like this 
one-dimensional slugfest, but the point of the song where everything instrumentally just drops out and then what comes in, of course, like some more linear twinkling guitar passages that don't really feel distinctly different from the other linear twinkling guitar passages. On top of that, this is easily the most tacked on example of their usage on the entire LP. Thankfully, the final two tracks of the record leave Bright Green Field in pretty good standing, starting with Global Groove, which is a dark cinematic, almost Floydian moment on the LP, which portrays our earthly hellscape as a groove that we're all kind of locked into, dancing to, from here until our eventual demise. And while the end of this track isn't exactly climactic, it does somewhat seamlessly flow into the final cut here, Pamphlets, which brings the massive lengths back. This one runs up to eight minutes. It's really the shorter songs around the midpoint and on the back end where I think the record starts to falter. But again, to get back to Pamphlets, while this isn't my favorite of the longest cuts on the record, it still does have an intensity and I guess a roller coaster ride type experience that many other tracks here lack. So in a way, the band is still saving one of the better songs here for last. For the most part, I liked this record. I liked it quite a bit. I think there are a great deal of highlights here and even on the tracks that I thought were uh, relatively underwhelming or uninteresting, the band still like had some great potential. Maybe some tracks or ideas weren't fleshed out as far as they could have been. There were also some songwriting and structuring ideas that got a bit more stale as the band began to incorporate them again and again and again as the record was drawing on. Still, I thought Bright Green Field was a fairly enjoyable listen. I'm feeling a decent too strong seven. On this one, Tran. Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Squid uh, Forever.